Another milestone this week for OSU's wheat improvement team. Joining us now to talk about it is Dr. Brett Carver, who leads the team. Brett, five new wheat varieties this year. Why five? Yeah, it's, uh, it was a tough decision just to, to bring it down to five, I'll tell you that. But uh, most importantly, we, we had so many different initiatives going on, and, and all these initiatives just came into place in one year. And uh, all the products came at the, about the same time as far as when they're ready to go and be launched. And uh, here we are. We have five projects to talk about. These were not just overnight decisions, of course, and hardly ever it is with, with plant breeding. But I, would, I, I, I counted up the number of years, and it took 67 years total for all five varieties to go from cross to this point where we're actually releasing them. It really comes down to what, is, what are the problems we're trying to solve? And what are the solutions we want to provide and, and provide opportunities? And, and that's what drove this uh, from the, from, from the get-go, and it always does. Well, let's not wait any longer. Let's give a rundown for everybody of, of these five that have been released, starting with the first one, which is called Uncharted. Uncharted, yes. This is a, uh, a dual-purpose plus wheat. I mean, it, it is, if, if you want a recipe for success, it's one part variety and one part cattle. It really wants cattle and needs cattle to do its job. And, and the reason for that is you can plant it early and not have to worry about one disease that has been our nemesis for all these years, and that's barley yellow dwarf. This variety has true resistance to barley yellow dwarf, a, a level of resistance that we, we've never seen before. And that's why we're calling it uncharted. We are in very different territory. And I think it's going to lay the ground for uh, the varieties to come after it. And, and, and we're going to see this, this repeated theme of a new type of barley yellow dwarf of protection on our varieties. But not just that, the, the forage production on it, it comes out of the ground really fast, covers the ground fast. It's more of a lateral forage producer. And so that's really good for protecting that yield later on. Uh, and then it has good resistance beyond barley yellow dwarf. Again, this is just a dual purpose, tailor-made variety. The next one, Strad CL Plus, which we have right here. Yeah. Tell us about that one. Well, I can't think of a better instrument uh, to play a double stop on than the Strad Violin. And, and we really can't talk about this variety unless we talk about double stop. That's what we're trying to, to replace, actually. And it, it's taken a long time to do that. We wanted to, number one, make double stop a little bit earlier, earlier maturing. And that was really important, but to make it earlier maturing, we didn't want to make it so uh, susceptible to freezes in the spring. So we had that magic combination now. We had a little bit earlier maturity, but we can get around most of these freezes that we're seeing and have been experiencing. Um, but, you know, the same kind of protein, maybe a little bit lower protein, but it's so, double stop is so high to begin with. Uh, similar level of test weight, maybe a little bit lower in test weight, but double stop can give a little bit. Um, Higher yield, where we think this variety fits best, which is going to be right in the heart of Oklahoma, central Oklahoma, uh, to name the first area, but then also north central and south central. There's not going to be any setback. No drop back on this. I mean, it's, Strad's going to pick up where Double Stop leaves off. So this tune's going to be played for a long time. The next one, Breakthrough, tell us about it. Yeah, um, we finally have broken through this barrier of breeding wheat streak mosaic resistance into our germplasm and, and it's taken a long time. The experimental number for, for breakthrough ends with 8512 and I think that's significant because the last two digits of 8512 is 12 and that's the last two digits of the variety that I think breakthrough is going to displace and that's TAM 112. So think of breakthrough as a replacement of TAM 112 with that wheat streak mosaic resistance that TAM 112 has, but better standability, higher yield, really good yield and test weight combination that's been showing up in our variety trials now for a couple of years, but good quality too. So it has all those boxes checked, I think, plus has this wheat streak, which happens to come, the, the resistance happens to come from an, a related species to wheat called intermediate wheatgrass. That was also the donor of the barley yellow dwarf resistance in Uncharted. Number four on the list, Butler's Gold. Butler's Gold, yes. Um, th this is a sprinting variety. I, that's the, about the best way I can describe it. So, uh, you know, when we want to describe a variety that, that comes out fast, finishes fast, that's just, that's a sprinter to the finish. And it took me a, an, an article 
uh, in the Oklahoman to figure that out, thanks to Barry Trammell, because he wrote an article about OSU sprinter James Butler, and I never knew the story about him. But he's one of the fastest Oklahomans of all time and went to school right here. He was ready to go to the Olympics in 1980, but could not because of the boycott. Anyway, I, I had the opportunity to visit with James, and I, I think this is a perfect fit because Butler's gold is really one that's unusual. We needed something that could come in late, catch up with everything that would have started on time, and finish on time. And that takes a sprint to the finish. So this is not the usual OSU wheat variety. You want to plant it late, let it do its thing, and that is catch up with everything else. We could plant a lot of varieties in December, but they're gonna to try to mature on into July. Well, that's too late. Uh, we need something that has that maturity uh, acceleration. And, and that takes a little bit different genetics than what we, we normally work with. 99% <laughs> of the varieties that we breed, and, and this is that 1%. Last but not least, one that is very near and dear to OSU. Yeah, big country. I mean, that is all OSU name. And, and uh, you know, this, this, is, this is a variety that looks like big country in the field. And it, 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 it plays tall ball for one thing. It's a tall wheat, not too tall. It won't, it won't lay down, it has good standability. But it just, it's a really tough wheat variety. And, and we need that because we have a lot of challenges to deal with. And I've already talked about some of the diseases. We've, we've, we've solved some of those problems, but this one is, is right there with them. The only difference is it's not a red wheat. It's not a hard red winter wheat. It's a hard white wheat that goes right in the same part of our state where we're used to growing hard red, right in the center of our state. And uh, it, it has, I would say, it could be one of our best disease packages. If, 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 it's, if it's bested by one variety, it would be uncharted because it does not have, uh, 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 Big Country does not have barley yellow dwarf resistance. That's the only, only meaningful disease that we have to think about in Oklahoma that it does not have resistance to. And other than that, it, it is a beautiful wheat variety. For seed producers who are interested in maybe getting some seed and going for it this fall, uh, their seed available? Oh, definitely. Different amounts for different varieties, of course, but I, I think the total is over 10,000 bushels for all five varieties combined. Great. Okay, Brett, congratulations Thank again you. to you and the team. We Thank will you see you again soon. On of the team. And for more information on the new varieties, as well as OSU Ag Research, go to sunup.okstate.edu.